Snapchat is one of the most popular apps in the world, just passing 900 million monthly active users. If you're new to Snapchat or haven't used it in a while, I'm gonna show you a complete guide on how to use the app and how to level up your skills so that you'll use it to its full capability. If you're on an iPhone or an Android, we first need to get the Snapchat app. So open up the App Store or Google Play Store, and from here, we're just gonna search for Snapchat. You'll be able to see here is Snapchat, 5.1 million ratings. I can get it just by tapping on the cloud button. Keep in mind, if you haven't installed it previously, you'll just tap on a little get button or download button. Now you'll be able to see this is the icon for Snapchat. It's that little white ghost with the yellow background around it, a really iconic logo. So you can see when I open it up, it looks like this. I've already created an account, so it does recognize my account. But if you've never signed up before, you're just gonna tap on sign up here and let's hit allow. And then you're gonna enter in your first name, your last name, go through the process of entering in your email address and your phone number and setting up that account. Now, after you've set up that account, you'll see a screen that looks like this. It will ask you for the camera. Let me just flip that camera around and give it access to all of these things. Now, you'll be able to see it looks like this. I've given it access to my camera, to my microphone, my contacts, etc. Now, you'll be able to see when you open up Snapchat, it defaults to the camera section. And this is really purposeful because they want you to immediately start taking photos and videos and sending those to friends. However, the first place that I would recommend you go is the messaging section at the bottom left. If you tap on that, you'll be able to see all of the messages that you have sent and received. Again, if you're just signing up, you won't necessarily have any of these. And if you don't have any yet, you can always tap on the pencil and paper icon at the bottom right. And then you'll be able to search for anybody if you wanted to create a new chat or even a new call if you wanted to call somebody or make a group call. Now, if you don't necessarily have any friends on Snapchat yet, you can always tap on that yellow plus at the top, right? And you can either add friends that have added you or accept them. You can also go into find friends and you'll be able to see all contacts here as well. So I can tap on contacts and see any of my contacts that either have Snapchat and I can add them directly on here. Or if they don't, I can tap on the invite button to invite them to join me on Snapchat. Now, let's get out of here. After you've added a friend, you'll be able to pop into their specific message by just tapping on their name, and you'll be able to see messages that you have sent and received to that person. Same as any other messaging app, you can just start typing in something. And after you've typed in something, you can hit that little send button to send them a message. Of course, you can tap, tap on the little phone or camera icon at the top right if you wanted to call them as well. So you can message somebody similar to WhatsApp, similar to your messages app on your iPhone or Android. However, a lot of people use this to send snaps back and forth. And to be able to do that, we're going to tap on the camera at the bottom center. Again, this is where it usually defaults to. You have three different options in terms of getting a media to send to other people. One is you can just tap on the shutter and it will take an immediate photo. It does say it wants to use my location. I'm going to hit don't allow right now. And then basically I'll walk you through why it wants us to do that. So I took a photo just by tapping on the shutter or let's hit abandon and you can take a video by pressing and holding on this icon at the bottom center, the shutter icon. And you can see I can take my finger and swipe it up to zoom in and I can swipe it down to zoom out. So this takes a video directly in the camera app. And let's get out of here. Your third option is to upload something from your memories or camera roll. You can see at the bottom center here is the icon for your camera roll. You can just tap on that and you'll be able to see it sometimes pops up with random things, but you can get out of there and it will show you your memories, your camera roll. You can go over to screenshots, stories, 
and even my eyes only, which are essentially private snaps, videos, photos, etc., that you have password protected on here so that no one else can see them, even if they have access to Snapchat. Everybody can have a Snapchat public profile. This is your public way to showcase videos, photos, events, all that stuff to your audience and help to grow a following directly on the Snapchat app. Now, on here, let's say I just took a quick photo. And from here, I wanted to send it to someone else, but I wanted to kind of customize it a little bit. The first thing you'll see at the very top is add a sound. So you can add a song to this if you wanted to just tap on it. You'll be able to see, I can just go through, listen to various songs, and then add it at the very top here. You can see Beautiful Day, the song has been added. You'll also be able to see at the very bottom are various filters. So I can go through and see any of these filters. Again, I don't want to enable my location, but essentially you can use any of these filters that you might want to use. And again, you can add text on here. If I wanted to add text, I can customize the text to be different fonts or colors, etc. I can move it around the screen. I have a bunch of different options in terms of customizing this snap. Now, when I'm ready, I can hit send to at the bottom right. And from here, it allows me to share this with my public story. This will allow everybody on Snapchat to be able to see it. I can share it with just my friends, or I can also share it with individual friends if I want to choose a specific person and then hit send, it will send that snap to that one person. Now, when I go in here and I hit open the chat, you'll be able to see that was delivered. One of the things that you will know on here is if you say hi or whatever, you can see that it has your messages, but sometimes they do disappear. Depending on your specific settings, they might disappear quickly within a minute or two, or they might stick around for a day or 24 hours, something like that. So I'll show you some settings on how to change that, whether it will just disappear or not. So that's sending and receiving snaps and messages. At the bottom left is the little location icon. Again, I'm going to hit don't allow because I would prefer not to allow it to see my location. However, if you do allow it, I'll show you a cool trick as well. But on here, I can see the location of all of my friends or contacts, and I can even zoom out to see where people are in the entire world. In some instances, it might have a red blob. This is where a lot of people are using Snapchat currently. Maybe not necessarily my friends, but a lot of active users right now. I can tap on the gear icon at the top right here. And let's say I want to allow it to use my location. The key in here is if I hit while using the app and go back, it will be able to use my location, but I can tap on that gear icon and you can always turn on ghost mode. And this says when enabled, your friends can't see your location. So you can choose to turn this off and it will share your location with all your friends or specific friends. However, you can also turn that on and then hit until I turn off and then it will disable the location until you choose to manually turn it on again. While sharing your location on Snap Map can be fun with other friends, keep in mind you might want to restrict that to certain people because of course you can meet strangers and random people on Snapchat and you don't want to share your exact location with all of those people. You want to tailor it down to just specific people if possible. Let's get out of here because there are some other sections as well. You can see at the bottom right is these two little people. These are your stories, similar to Instagram or TikTok. You can see a bunch of stories. You can see a bunch of videos that you can swipe through and tap on and watch. You can also tap on that little play icon at the bottom right. And again, this is similar to Reels or TikTok videos. It will just show you endless scrolling feeds of various videos. Now, I would highly recommend changing some settings and your profile as well. So tap on your profile at the top left here. If you swipe down, you'll be able to see this is your Bitmoji, sort of a cartoon character of yourself. On here, you can always customize it, customize the look and the feel of the various hats, the clothing, all of that different stuff you can customize and change.
However, you'll also be able to see Snapchat Plus if you wanted to sign up for more features like seeing or pinning a best friend, etc. I don't pay for that, and I don't think it's a huge benefit to pay for it. But you can also scroll down, see who's uh, add to my story, add to your story for just friends or public. You can see all your friends. You can basically go through and see your location, all of those different things. However, I would... I would also recommend going into your settings because within the settings, I would highly recommend going down and going to my privacy and data. Now within my privacy and data, you can see I can scroll down and see who can see my location. You might want to modify this is a big one. And then also who can view my story. You might want to customize who can view your story who can um, see me and find friends. This will just like basically turn on or off the ability of random people to send and receive messages to you and find you randomly on Snapchat. Now let's go back out of here because I also would highly recommend scrolling down and tapping on activity indicator. This allows other people to see when you're on Snapchat. So if you turn this on, everybody will be able to see when you're on Snapchat. You might not want them to see that. So I would recommend turning that off so that everybody won't be able to see when you're on there and seeing their specific snaps. Now, after we've gone all the way back out of here, one last thing that I will show you is if you tap on the messages icon at the bottom left here, you can always just tap and hold on someone's name. And then from here, you have a bunch of different settings. I would highly recommend tapping on the manage friendship here. If anybody is bothering you, you can always report them, block them, remove their friend, etc. But you can also just press and hold and change their story settings, privacy settings, chat and notification settings. If you wanted to clear the chat feed or have the chats deleted immediately after viewing, after 24 hours or seven days or never. By default, Snapchat messages, videos, photos, et cetera, all disappear and are deleted after 24 hours. The reason for this is Snapchat wants a low threshold and you sharing activities and events on your daily life, not feeling like it needs to be glamorized like it is oftentimes in Instagram. I hope this gives you a good inclination of how Snapchat is being used, how you can use Snapchat, and how you can message and receive messages from friends and start connecting directly on the app.